Hey guys, and welcome back to the Matthew 514 podcast. If you are new here, then welcome for the first time. I'm Carter and I am your host. So I'm so excited because today we're going to be talking about healthy habits. I thought that this would be such a perfect topic going into the new year. Um, and I thought it'd just be a fun one to talk about because our habits, you know, for different people are going to look different. Um, I had a sushi date with my sister tonight, so I'm really thirsty after all that sodium. So I have my water here, so I probably will be taking lots of water breaks, or I'm just going to get really focused into this and not even, you know, take my water breaks. I also have a fan going because it's really hot in here, so you guys shouldn't be able to hear it. And once I turn the background noise off or, you know, edit it without it, then it should be okay, but it might be there, so my apologies if you can hear the fan. Um, but yeah, so let's dive into this. Let's talk about healthy habits, um, and let's learn you know, more about how we can create healthy habits for this new year. So I want to start with reading um, Psalms chapter 1, because I feel like this is such a great um, couple of verses that really build a solid foundation um, for encouragement to build healthy habits. And kind of can, you know, open up our eyes to why we should build healthy habits. And so it says, Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in with mockers, but they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither and they prosper in all they do, but not the wicked. They are like worthless chaff scattered by the wind. They will be condemned at the time of judgment. Sinners will have no place among the godly, for the Lord watches over the path of the godly, where the path of the wicked leads to destruction. So that really tells me right there is that, you know, we need to follow Jesus. And when we follow him and we build our life for him, then we're going to have a strong foundation. And when trials come and hardships come and difficulties come, we're rooted. But also when awesome moments come, mountaintop moments come, you know, beauty comes, we're not worshiping those moments. And those moments aren't causing us to go crazy because once again, we're still rooted in Jesus. Um, and I believe that when we build healthy habits, they can lead us to be built more in Jesus. I definitely don't think that healthy habits are the way to having a firm foundation. I just think they can help build that foundation. They're not going to be what saves us in, you know, the end of this life. They're not going to be where all of our joy comes from. They're not, like I said, where our salvation's from. They're not the end all be all, but they definitely are a really big, important stepping stone into being able to live a good life for Christ. Um, so that is Psalms 1, um, and that's the whole entire chapter. It's a short chapter, only six verses, but I really wanted to get that out there and pave um, that pathway for what I I want this podcast to look like today. So I want to share with y'all a couple of my healthy habits that I have. Before I even share that, I want to remind you guys that these are habits that work for me. That doesn't mean they're going to work for you. Obviously, I think that there are some habits that we all should incorporate into our life, but we are all in different seasons of our lives. And so that means the habits that work for me may not work for you. And the reality is that the habits that work for me in this season of my life may not work for me in the next season of my life. And that's okay. But I think that when we have our firm foundation in Christ, then our habits are going to flow from that relationship. They're going to flow from that foundation. They're going to come from it. So that means when they change, they're going to be changing for good, not for bad. Um, and so they're not our foundation. Christ is our foundation. They're going to look different for everybody. So go in to this with an open mind, giving yourself grace for what your life looks like, you know, open eyes with what my life looks like and, you know, finding what works for you. Um, and then I just want to share, once I share my healthy habits, I definitely want to share some Bible verses that connect with them. Um, and how, you know, I've interpreted those Bible verses to, you know, um, correspond with those habits. And then I wanted to share, you know, a couple little key reminders and then the challenge for you guys. So I'm hoping that you guys are going to enjoy this. Um, so let's dive into it. So with healthy habits, and going into the new year, it's so easy for us to be like, the new year, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, blah, 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 blah. We all do it. I do it. But the reality is that the new year is just, you know, a new day. It's not like we have this, you know, earth-shattering big change that happens. It's literally just one day. It's from going to a Saturday to a Sunday or a Monday to a Tuesday. You know, it's really not the big of our deal. Um, so 
we say in the new, I'm going to do all these things. But if we're not having a mindset shift, if we're not having a heart shift, then it's just another day. So realize that the new year is just another day. You can take it and use it for good, or you can take it and not use it for good. You can use it for your advantage, but don't think that this new year is going to be where everything changes and turns around because the reality is that it's just another day. Um, it's the Lord's day, but it's not this, you know, earth shattering, crazy, you know, change. Um, so with these healthy habits, a couple that I have um, that I want to share with you are just ones that I, a lot of them I've built over the past couple of years of my life since knowing Jesus. Um, and they've just allowed me to live a better life. They've allowed me to spend more time with him. They've pushed me to be a better version of myself. They've pushed me to savor the life that I have and live where I am. They've pushed me to be the light. They've just pushed me to grow as a person. Um, once again, they might look different for you. Um, they might look the same, um, but just go in open eyes filled with grace. So the first thing that I always do or that I seek to do is the devotion with Jesus first thing in the morning. I love to spend time with Jesus right away. Now, obviously, I wake up, go to the bathroom, you know, set up, you know, brush my teeth, take my retainer, or take my retainer, and then brush my teeth. You know, sometimes I need to get something to eat first. Sometimes, you know, I need to get some coffee. Um, definitely take care of that. But then I go and I sit with Jesus. And the reason why I do it first thing in the morning is because I don't want to be around anybody. I don't want to be around anything. I don't want to go on social media. I don't want to, you know, be talking to a bunch of people. I don't want to be having to think about my responsibilities, dealing with school, dealing with work, dealing with anything like that because I need my mind to be set on Christ first thing in the morning. And then out of my overflow with him, then I can deal with all of those things in my life. And so I do that devotion first thing in the morning. I understand that if you're having to leave your house at like five in the morning, then it's going to be really hard to do devotion first thing in the morning. So it might just look like turning on the Bible app to listen to Bible verses in your car as you're driving to work. I understand for people with kids, you know, it's a lot harder to do that first thing in the morning when you have little ones waking up and you're having to take care of them. Um, I know for me, sometimes I don't always do it first thing in the morning. I try to, like I said, but I am only human. And so there's been times in my life where I've been in very busy seasons of my life. And when I wake up in that morning or in the morning, and because I try to allow at least 30 minutes to an hour to spend time with Jesus, once again, you know, that's going to look different for everybody. But sometimes I know that I need that extra 30 minutes to an hour of rest. Um, and I know that Jesus is okay with that too, because he's called us to rest as well. But I try to set up my life and set up my schedule. So my devotion, devotion is first thing in the morning. That means I'm going to bed sooner or I'm saying no to certain things, saying yes to others. Then that's what it looks like. Um, and it just makes me think of the Bible verse, Mark 135, um, where it says, very early in the morning while it was so dark Jesus got up left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed and so if Jesus valued getting away with the father then we should value getting away with the father Jesus did it first thing in the morning um that's why you know I want to do it first thing but he does understand you know if it isn't until later in the day or if it isn't until we do a couple things but I want to spend time with Jesus and in that time it looks like praying it I try to worship I struggle with that in my free time or in my devotion time and then it looks like doing some form of devotion you know reading my bible doing a devotion on the devotion app doing a guided bible study different things like that just trying to pour out my heart to him and then getting filled back up or sometimes i read my bible first and then i pray um it's going to look different for everybody but i really encourage you to create a space and a time in your life where you spend time with jesus it doesn't have to be 30 minutes to an hour it doesn't even need to be first thing in the morning jesus just wants your time and if you can only give him five minutes to start he will take that and use that and he will open up the door for that five minutes to become 10 minutes to become 15 minutes um and another thing is sometimes praying is uncomfortable at first and so you know we have to realize that it's gonna take some time to grow in and that's where my second prayer is or my second thing is is that i seek to pray all the time and that doesn't mean you know i'm constantly praying in the sense that like you know i'm not connected with life or i'm not living life or things like that but i'm just seeking to have a mind of jesus and so, you know, when I'm living and I'm doing fun things and I'm enjoying it, it can be as simple as saying, thank you, Jesus, for this moment. Um, you know, when I get back in the car after running some errands, you know, I tell Jesus what happened, maybe some things that stressed me out, some things that made me happy, and I thank him for those things. Um, and I say, you know, thank you, Jesus, for these things. I need help with this. You know, if I notice some prayer requests that, you know, I want to pray over for some other people, or I notice some things that I need to grow in myself, hey, I wasn't as patient as I would like to be, or, you know, <clears throat> 
I wasn't as kind to that person as I should have been, or mm, I missed an opportunity right in front of my eyes to make a difference and show someone who Jesus is. I'm only human. I need Jesus' help. And so I seek to pray as much as I can, you know, all the times that I can, because the more I pray, the more times I get my mindset on Christ, so the more I'm going to look like him. Um, and the Bible actually tells us um, in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, to pray without ceasing. That means to pray without stopping. And that doesn't mean, you know, we stay sheltered and isolated. That doesn't mean, you know, we have to be those super short people where it's like, well, I can't do this and I can't do that. And I blah, 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 blah. Like, no, you're allowed to live. You're allowed to get out and go and live a good life. But you should all do that with the mindset of Christ, the attitude of Christ and seeking to honor and glorify him in all that you're doing, keeping your mindset on him while you're doing those things, not worshiping those things, worshiping him. Um, and then the Bible also tells us in Matthew 6, 6, but when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And so that's a reminder to me, you know, when I do my quiet time in the morning and when, you know, I have my devotion times and my prayers, you know, I seek to make this private. Obviously, sometimes the thank you, Jesus, you know, and the little mental prayers, there are people but when I'm doing my devotion time, you know, I'm closing my bedroom door. I am, you know, going in a space where no one's going to bother me. I'm going down in our basement, my family's basement, and, you know, or I'm telling my parents and my family, you know, hey, you know, I'm going and doing this devotion. They respect that time. Um, and that's where you don't have to be distracted and you can be focused in everything that you're doing. Um, so devotion first thing, praying all throughout the day. A third thing that I have loved to incorporate, and this is actually something that I've incorporated more recently into my life. Ever since I started walking with Jesus, I always thought to do devotions first thing and praying all the time. But that is something that I've grown in. And honestly, it was something that I kind of grew out of that I'm trying to actually grow back in because I started to realize that I got so busy in my life that I was forgetting to pray throughout the day, that I was forgetting to get my focus back on Jesus. Um, and so once again, I struggle with that too. Like you're not alone in your struggles. I've been listening to this podcast called Confessions of a Crappy Christian. And, you know, she just talks about with different women and stuff about just the struggles that we go through as Christians and realizing that you are okay. And it is totally normal if you struggle with these things. And so coming from the standpoint, because I think it's very easy, especially when people have podcasts and they're talking about faith-based stuff and they're talking about Jesus, it's easy for you to look at them and think they're perfect. My friend, let me tell you, I'm not perfect. You know, I struggle with this just as much as you do. And so I want you to understand that sometimes I do hit snooze on that alarm and I don't do my devotion first thing like I should. And sometimes, you know, I'm half engaged in reading it when I should be fully engaged. And sometimes, you know, I'm not praying all the time and I get caught up in what I want to do and in my thoughts and my music and my this and my that. Um, and it's sin and it's not right. But Jesus loves you. And he wants to meet you in that. He loves me. He wants to meet me in that. And he just wants to help us be better. And so he's actually been helping me to be better about in the moments where I'm doing things, you know, keeping my focus on him by literally just thanking him, saying a quick prayer. It doesn't have to be anything elaborate. Like I said, thank you, Jesus, for this moment. You know, right now I'm getting, I love working on puzzles. So right now I'm getting to do this puzzle with my dad. It's really fun. Thank you for it. Help me to continue to have fun and to keep my focus on you. Amen. Literally in my head. It could be shorter than that. It could literally just be like, Jesus. Like, if that is all it takes for you, um, just say his name in your mind. Um, I have a pastor or a leader of mine who we were talking about, like, rest and calmness. And he said that he had a word that whenever he feels like he's super busy, he says that word. And that's, like, his calm word to get back focused. And so maybe create a word that calms you down and gets you back focused on Jesus. So, do it the first thing, praying all the time. Third thing that, like I said, I've been trying to grow in or that I've been incorporating more is that I've been loving to read at nighttime. Like sitting in my bed, I hung up like Christmas lights in my room, like during the fall, like even before Christmas. And I light a candle and the ambiance is perfect. Sometimes I turn like one of those little like fireplaces on on my TV with the little crackling noises. Um, and I just sit in my bed and I read a chapter of my book. Um, or sometimes it's not even a chapter. Sometimes I get tired and I fall asleep before that. Lately, I've actually, because I'm on break right now from college, I've been reading a chapter during the day. So I'm just reading a little devotion book and then reading a chapter of my Bible. Um, that's so much better than going on my phone. That's so much better than scrolling through my computer. Um, that's so much better than just watching, you know, endless hours of TV is being intentional about rest, but also being intentional about what I'm feeding my mind and my soul and my heart and my spirit. 
Um, and so I really have been trying to read at nighttime, calm down and also just get my focus back on Jesus. Um, thanking him for the day, looking, you know, at the past day and seeing what all happened, thanking him for it. Um, because I think it's very easy when we're in the moment of the day to be like, oh, all of this stuff is going wrong. But then when we see the bigger picture at the end of the day, we're like, wait, well, you know, all of this actually happened. Like, sure, this one bad thing happened or two of these bad things happened. But in reality, I had 10 amazing things that happened. Um, and I know that my end of the day time has looked very different throughout the different seasons of my life. I know that it used to look like, um, you know, different devotion books. It used to look like, you know, sitting down and praying like a, you know, pretty dedicated prayer. It's looked like walking around in my room and praying. Um, it's, it's changed. It's looked different. Um, and that is a reminder to you guys that your habits are going to look different um, in different seasons. But, like, for example, just spending time with Jesus, that is a priority. The habit of it might look different. It might be first thing in the morning, it might be later on, it might be at the end of the day, but it's going to be something I'm going to incorporate into my life because it's a priority. And that's the thing about our habits is that habits are simply a reflection of our priorities. I actually read that in a study recently, um, but they just reflect where our heart is. And so whatever habits we create come from what we desire in our life and what we want to grow in our life. And so I desire to spend time with Jesus. I desire to grow closer to him. Therefore, I have these habits to do that. Um, and that connects to the Bible verse for me. And another thing that I want you guys to realize is that these Bible verses, um, you know, they can be taken in so many different ways. And so this is what applies to me, but it doesn't necessarily have to, you know, apply to you guys. Sorry, my phone's dinging. Um, so it doesn't necessarily have to apply to you guys. So um, I thought I screenshotted the picture of the Bible verse I want in. But I might not have. Hmm, I'm trying to find it. Maybe I didn't. I think it's right here. Maybe because I had it. Let me open up my Bible because I think it's literally right here. Oh, it was just, it was Psalms 1. That's what it was. Okay, so it's the Psalms 1 where it says, Psalms 1, 2, but they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. And so that's a reminder to me, okay, I'm spending time with, time with Jesus first thing in the morning, but I also want to spend time with him at the end of the day as well. So starting my day off on a good note, you know, keeping my day throughout the day, focus on a good note, and then ending my day on a good note. Um... And that's just going to lead to so much gratitude and so much goodness. And it actually made me think, so I've had a really good day today. I was on break. I've been on break for college. And definitely, like, during this time of the year, seasonal depression is a big thing. And it's something that I do struggle with. And so I really, it's been sunny and the weather's been warming up where I live a little bit because we just had a really, really cold front come through and it was just terrible. Um... And so I knew that I just wanted to get outside and enjoy the weather. Well, I took my dog on a little adventure and, you know, we were out having fun. Well, we were like climbing on rocks and she was like really anxious. And then like, it was kind of like knowing that she was anxious kind of made me anxious. And there was just a lot going on. And I know this is so silly, but I had like new shoes on and I didn't want to get them dirty. And I know that is so like terrible sounding, but I didn't want to. And I just was like stressed. And then when I was like trying to get her into my car, my car's like lifted. And so, or my Jeep is, and so she doesn't jump up in it normally sometimes she does so I was lifting her up in it there was so much going on I had stuff all in my hands and then I like I was just getting so flustered and then I was like driving and leaving the place where I was and I saw on my hood I left my book and it was like flapping and I was like oh no and as soon as I got to stop it flies off of the jeep and so I get out and I'm looking for the book and I'm like where in the world did it go like what the heck? And then I looked down and my, it's underneath my tire. And so then I had to pull forward and there's a big old tire mark over this book. There's rocks all on the other side of it, scratches. And I was really frustrated in that moment. I just was frustrated because I felt frustrated, you know, with my dog and with, you know, not wearing the proper shoes and with my book and with all of these different things. But I've been having such a good day. And then Jesus in that moment, like, just reminded me, Carter, don't focus on this one bad moment. Look at the rest of the day and see how good it is. And don't let this one bad moment ruin your day. And so it's very easy for us to get fixated on one bad moment. But when we have these practical steps in these moments and times that we are creating with Jesus, 
our perspective is going to be lifted off of our situations, lifted off of our things, especially in moments where they're a lot bigger versus just a stupid, silly little book incident, um, but where it's actually big life events and things happening, we're going to be able to have a big mindset, um, seeing the bigger picture versus seeing our zoomed in mindset. So those are just great ways to grow closer to Jesus to live a better life, um, and to be able to see the bigger perspective. And that's the beauty with Jesus is that these things are going to help us grow closer to him, but they're also just going to allow us to live a better life because life with Jesus is better. Took a little water sip. Okay. So then the fourth thing that is actually kind of funny that I just took a water sip. I didn't realize that, but one thing that I really, and these are so those first ones were more of like the things that I seek to do to grow closer to Jesus. Um, and I want to add with reading the books, I feel like my mindsets are like all over the place right now, but with the reading the books, um, one of my goals for this upcoming year is to at least read one book each month. I definitely far exceeded that this past year, but since I'm going to be going to college and actually being in person and life's just going to look a little different, I don't want to, you know, bite off more than I can handle. And that's another thing with habits. Don't create ones that you know you're not going to do. Obviously, you should create habits that are going to challenge you, but if you're creating ones that you know you're not going to complete that are just going to leave you feeling stressed out that are going to leave you feeling too challenged it's just like going to the gym you know if I went to the gym and I tried to lift 200 pounds I wouldn't be able to do it you know because that's just too much for me but if I start out smaller with like 50 pounds I could do that and so you know start out where you're capable and slowly add more or slowly bite off more, just like you would do if you're working out or anything like that. Um, and so with the reading, I've always sought to read books, um, Christian books. I don't read the books I read at night. They're not um, like secular books. Like I'm reading ones that are talking about Jesus, that are talking about things that I'm seeking to grow in. Right now, I'm reading a book that my small group this past semester read. Um, and it's just a book about finding our identity in Jesus. And I thought that that would be a really good book to read because a small group read it, but also because um, I'm about to be going to college and I want to make sure my identity is rooted in Jesus, not in this world or not in people, you know, as I go into a place in a situation where I want to go and be the light and show these people who don't know Jesus who he is. Um, so that is a big part of my life, too. It's just I love to read. Um, but that was a little side note. So anyways, those are the, you know, steps and things that kind of help me to go closer to Jesus, live a better life. And, and, you know, that sense too, they allow me to be a better version of myself. Um, so these other things are more of ways that help me to be a better version of myself. Um, but they also do push me to, um, go closer to Christ, which I'll share more about that, I guess, how that helps. But one of the things that I seek to do is I seek to drink a lot of water, especially water first thing in the morning. And I know that sounds so funny, but, or, you know, why would she include that habit? But it is a big habit of mine. I've noticed that my life is so much better when I drink more water. Like, um, I have way more energy, you know, I don't break out. Um, I feel a lot better working out. Um, I just feel healthier. I feel like, you know, my, like I digest food better. Like literally just my life is a lot better when I drink water. I don't get headaches. Um, it's just really awesome. And another thing is that, you know, these are our temples Like God gave us these bodies. And so we should take care of them. We should fuel them. And so I really seek to drink water first thing. Um, I did have a hydro flask, well, I still have it. And so I would try to drink, you know, a lot of that in the morning. But then I got this awesome hydro jug for Christmas. If you guys are watching the YouTube video, this thing is beautiful. Like, look at it. It's yellow. It has like a cow um, holder. If you're not watching, then you guys can just imagine. Um, but I've been trying to drink like at least one of these a day, which is like 73 ounces. But today I've already drinking like one and a half to like two of them. Um... So getting plenty of water in because I just dive off of that. And I think that's another thing that we have to realize is our habits should be things that push us and help us to be better. They should be things that allow us to thrive. And I think so many people, especially Christians, think that, you know, seeking to do that is selfish. But in reality, it's not. Because if we are, because yes, we definitely need to pour into other people. And we need to help other people to become better. And we need to lead other people to Jesus. And we need to serve. But if we're doing that out of a cup of emptiness, then they're going to be getting our leftovers. But if we're doing that out of a cup of overflow, then they're going to be getting way more blessings. But we need to have a cup of overflow. So that means we need to make sure that we are spending time with Jesus, that we are taking care of ourselves 
that we are doing what we can, not in a selfish way, not in an idolistic way, if that even is a word, but you know what I mean. Not in a way that is sinful, but in a way that is God honoring, because the Bible actually tells us, um, which is going to connect with a couple points coming up, but um, the Bible tells us, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. And so that means, you know, I know by taking care of myself, by drinking water, and by some of these other steps I'm going to share with you, or habits I'm going to share with you guys, you know, my life is going to be better, and I get to honor Jesus with this temple he has given me. And so if I'm not filling this temple that he gave me with water and I'm filling it with soda and sugary drinks and a ton of caffeine like it's not going to be taking care of my temple or if I'm constantly filling it with junk food that's another thing I'm not sure with eating I will eat you know unhealthy things too but I also do seek to eat healthy just because I seek to take care of my temple and I feel better when I do that um so I drink the water Singing to honor my temple, you know, it allows me to thrive and be better. Um, and then another thing that I seek to do is I try to exercise at least three to five times a week. Definitely, ideally, I would love to exercise five times a week. But once again, going back to the seasons of life, sometimes that's not always practical. And I know that in this past season of my life with balancing school and work, you know, it was hard. And um Finally, towards the end of the season, Jesus started to open up my eyes how I could incorporate it more. And now that I'm on break, I've been, you know, back into the grind at the gym. And um, I don't just, you know, go to the gym. My workouts look like all over the place. Yesterday, I ran, you know, on this path or this trail, you know, um, where I live and just got out of nature, enjoy the sun, move my body. I think taking workout classes is super fun. Um, I love doing like YouTube video like workouts, like um, hit workouts. Uh, core workouts, you know, leg workouts on there. I also, um, during Christmas or before Christmas, my mom and I would do like these Christmas dance videos and they're like dance hit workout videos. And, um, this past week or yeah, past couple of days, I've been going to the gym with a friend. Um, and that's just been a lot of fun. I like going on walks, I think bike rides. Not that I d never really do this, but I like the idea of it. I just don't really have the sense to be able to do it, but you know, bike rides, hiking, things like that. Um, working out doesn't have to just be in the gym. Um, find a way to take care of your body and exercise your body in a way that you like it. You know, invite a friend to tag along with you. Um, but just seek to move your body and take care of it. And a girl that I was in small group with this past semester, you know, she realized she wasn't in the gym like she would want to be. She knew that she couldn't commit to going every single day. So she just started literally with, I'm just going to go once a week. And if that's what you can do, then do that. Um, but really seek to move your body, take care of it. For me, I like ideally, ideally, you know, exercise five times a week, but that doesn't always happen and that's okay. But just seek to move your body, take care of it and honor God with it because like we just read, it is our temple. Um, and the Bible tells us in 1 Timothy 4, 8, um, for physical training is of some value. And then it goes on to say, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. So that's why I share with you guys my steps that lead me closer to Jesus first. But then I shared about the exercises that because it says for physical training is of some value is of some value. So it's literally telling us that it does hold value in our lives. It shouldn't hold all of the value. It shouldn't be what we worship. It shouldn't be what we idolize. It shouldn't be our identity. We shouldn't be a, oh, I'm a gym girl, or I'm a gym guy, I'm a gym rat. It shouldn't be a, oh, I'm a hiker, oh, I'm a biker, oh, you know, I'm a cycler, whatever it is. You know, it shouldn't be those things. It should be, I'm a follower of Jesus. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of the Most High. But out of this abundance and overflow, I do those things. I'm not those things. I simply do them to honor and glorify my father. Um, and once again, you know, with these habits is that this is going to look different for other people's physical needs too. Because some of us, you know, working out is going to look different. Sometimes we have physical handicaps that are going to hold us back. And that's okay too. So don't look to your left or your right and compare. You know, sometimes we're going to have responsibilities that are going to be priorities over working out. Don't look to your left or right or compare. Find what works for you and give it all to God and ask him, Jesus, what's going to work for me with all of these habits? You know, what should my time with you look like? What should my working out look like? What should my eating look like? What should these look like for my life so that I can grow closer to you. Um, don't do it apart from Jesus because we have to remember we are nothing without God. And if we did all of these things, we would still fall less than and we would still be short. You know, 
we would still miss the mark. We, these things are not the end all be all. Like I said, we need Jesus. And so don't worship these things, worship God. Um, so I exercise, you know, try to exercise three to five times a week, just seeking to honor God with my body. And then I think with all of those things, just, you know, seeking to drink plenty of water and exercising. Um, and like I mentioned, eating good, it just makes me think of the Bible verse 1 Corinthians 10 31. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. So whatever you're doing, do it to honor God, do it to glorify him. Um, I don't want that to be a message that is missing that is that these habits should just lead us to grow closer to God and to worship him more. They should lead us and push us, and the habits we create should lead us and push us to look more like him, to live more like him, to love more like him, to be more like him. Um, and if we're doing apart from him, then it's not going to be good. So then I have another thing that I like to do is self-care nights. Excuse me. I think that's a great way to take care of ourselves and to make sure that we're not you know, pouring out from a place of, um, you know, emptiness, but rather a place of abundance. Um, and one of the things that I love to do is I love to take baths. I love to make it all warm and soapy, sudsy, and smell good. And it's just relaxing. You know, read a book. You know, sometimes I'll turn a little movie on on my MacBook. I love Disney movies. Um, but just taking care of myself. Do a face mask. I have this little, like, heat up, like, animal. We call him Bear Dog. Um, because he's a, he's a dog, like, it's a heat up animal, but I used to call him a bear, because I just, I don't know, I thought he was a bear, but he's really a dog, so he's bear dog, and he's starting to smell really bad, like, he's, we've overused him now, so, um, my sister's boyfriend smelled him, and he was like, that smells like Chinese food, <laughs> um, I got a new one for Christmas, it's an alligator, I don't know what his name's gonna be, um, it's got to be something cool like bear dog, but I love that. That's super relaxing. My candles and, um, you know, lights when I'm reading, that's relaxing. Um, you know, I know putting on comfy jammies at the end of the day, like just taking care of myself um, is super awesome. And so that's something I encourage you to do, you know, take care of yourself, you know, don't go, 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 and never take time for yourself um, to get refueled, get revitalized. You know, Jesus rested. We need to to rest. Once God created the heavens and the earth, after six days of creating everything that was in them, he rested. If the God of the universe rested, then we know as meek humans, we need to rest. Um, and so set up time for yourself to rest, to take care of yourself. Um, and it makes me think of it all kind of connects back to the Bible verses about taking care of our temple. But I have 1 Corinthians 3.17, which says, If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For God's temple is sacred, and you together are that temple. And so, you know, we are his temple. As people, we are his temple. We're sacred. We need to... So if you have something sacred in your life, I think of my grandma's fine china that she has. That is super important to her. It's super special to her. It's sacred to her. We actually... Last time I had like a big family dinner and we ate off of it. And when my mom was pulling out, she said... My grandma's name was Mama. She was like, this is Mama's really fine china. So don't be playing around with it. Don't be messing around with it. Like, take care of it. It's sacred. You take care of it. You're not throwing it up in the air. You know, you're not slapping but it like you're taking care of it and so just as we take care of like fine china or things like that or like my new shoes I had today you know not that I should see shoes as sacred because that's probably not the healthiest mindset to have but you know they're new I want to keep them clean um so I was watching where I was stepping I was taking care of them but if we're going to take care of physical things like that that have no eternal value to them then we need to make sure that we're taking care of our souls and ourselves that have eternal weight and value to them um, and so taking care of ourselves, taking care of myself through self-care nights is a way that I do that. Um, and then another thing, so that's kind of all in like the area of self-care. So really, you know, kind of didn't realize I broke it up into these different sections, but you know, the way that I seek to spend time with Jesus, the way that I seek to take care of myself. And the next way is kind of the way that I seek to enjoy his gifts and seek to enjoy what he has given me. And the first one is I try to spend at least 30 minutes a day in nature. Um, I know that on rainy days, you know, that's probably not going to happen. Um, I know that it's tough, you know, in the winter months because it's so cold and snow and whatnot. Um, but I just feel like there is something about getting out in God's creation and just spending time with him 
out in his creation or, you know, just going for a walk out in nature. Um, there's this dock by my house. And after I took my dog on this little trip to, um, this like little beach area by our house, I went to the dock and I sat there and there were like 20,000 or 50,000 seagulls out in the water. I have no idea why. And they were really loud, but it was kind of fun. And you know, the ice or the water was all icy because it's winter time, um, but the sun was out and it just felt so good. It was so beautiful. I actually, you know, did preparation for this podcast um, and just sat in his creation, sat and glorified God who created it. Um, and I just feel like, like I said, it just connects me with him. Um, and it makes me think of the Bible verse 1 Chronicles 29 11, which says, Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, O Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. And so that reminds me that this earth is his. This beautiful place that he has created is his and he has given it as a gift to us. So I want to worship him for it. I want to thank him for it and I want to spend time in it, enjoying it because it is a gift. And it makes me think of um, the song, How Great Thou Art. And it says, you know, then sings my soul, my savior, God to thee, how great thou art, you know. This whole entire world is his masterpiece that he has painted. Just as a professional painter paints beautiful pictures, you know, and on a canvas, the earth is God's canvas that he has painted. And we get to look at it and be in awe of it. And one thing that I always think is that if I can be in awe of his creation now, of this earth now, and worship him now, how much more will I worship him once I'm in heaven in a perfect place, in paradise? But I must first learn how to worship him here in this place that he has given me that is already a gift. But that always leaves me in awe as well to think that this is this world and the beautiful things in it is nothing compared to what awaits us in heaven. Um, and it also makes me think of Psalms 86, 10, which says, for you are great and do wondrous things. You are God alone. Um, and so, you know, when I'm out in that nature and I'm enjoying it, it leads me right back to the heart of the father. I'm um, in all of these things, lead me back to him when I'm taking care of my temple, when I'm, um, you know, working out my body and choosing to listen to podcasts or, you know, worship music while working out. I don't always do that. I love me some country music too. Um, but seeking to fill up my spirit while taking care of my physical needs as well. Um, it leads me right back to his heart. Um, and God can work through anything. And that's the beautiful thing is that he is not limited at all. Um, and then another thing that I really value in my life is just community. Um, I walked through seasons of my life where I haven't had community. Um, I walked through seasons of my life where I've pushed away community. And I've also walked through seasons of my life where I've had a ton of community. And I know that the season of my life with community is way better than the ones without it. And I know that when I'm surrounded by godly people that I can sit with and have godly conversations with, it makes my life so much better. Um, I love to sit with friends in coffee shops and drink coffee and talk with them. I love, you know, to go on walks with friends and talk with them, go to the gym, talk with them. I love to hang out, make cookies, eat dinner, go on dinner dates, you know, have movie nights, go on adventures, have fun with them, just sit around in our jammies and talk. Like, I love godly community. Um, and I know that it is a good thing, and God created us for community. Um, there's so many Bible verses about it. In Hebrews 10, 24 through 25, it says, And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. So, being surrounded by community, encouraging my friends to be better, and having friends that encourage me to be better. Um, in Matthew 18, 20, it says, for where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. So when I'm, you know, surrounded by godly community, Jesus is right there with us. Um, in John 15, 12 through 13, it says, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. And so I want to be surrounded by friends that I can love and friends that can love me and friends that we both push each other to love Jesus more. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 14, it says, and we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive, encourage the disheartened, help the weak, be patient with everyone. My godly community, they call me out when I'm messing up. They call me out when I'm not on the right path. I need that because I don't always see the bigger picture. Um, you know, I need godly community is that when I'm in a down place and a low spot, they're able to pick me up and encourage me and love me. And that goes um, to the Bible verse that says, um, 
Ecclesiastes 4.10, if one falls down, his friend can help him up, but pity the man who falls and has no one to help him up. I don't want to go through life's hard seasons alone. I want to have friend and godly, friends and godly community that's going to push me and that's going to help me to continue to love Jesus. In Psalms 133.1, it says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is good and pleasant pleasant for me to have friends, for me to be in community. Um, in Romans 12, 13, it says, contribute to the needs of God's people and welcome strangers into your home. You know, have friends, be open to new friends. You know, don't be seclusive. I think that's the word. And, you know, push people out and be like, nope, my friend group's good. I don't need anyone else. But no, welcome people and love them. Um, and this one's one of my favorites, James 5, 16. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. So that tells me that I literally can experience healing in godly friendship. I just walked through a season of my life with a lot of brokenness, and I know that I wouldn't have experienced the healing that I have if it weren't for a lot of the friends and community that I was in and a part of. And so that, Bible verse resonates with me, guys. Um, I love it. And so I, you know, desire community. I love community. It's important. Um, and then the last habit that I want to share, which connects with the community, is that I seek to go to church on Sundays. Um... Um, am I always perfect in this? No. Have I been guilty of deciding to sleep in and not go to church? Yeah. Have I chosen to do other things? Yeah. Um, but do I seek to make this a big, important thing in my life? Absolutely. Because I know that it makes my life better. And there's this quote that says, church is not a place to go. Rather, it is a living body where God wants you to become a part. And we literally just read about all those Bible verses, especially the one where two or three are gathered in my name. There I am among them. And so when we're at church, God is there. And so I get to experience him on a greater note and a greater level being in his place, being with his people, um, honoring him, worshiping him and glorifying him. Um, so those are just, you know, a couple of my habits. There's other ones that I have, other things that I do, but these are definitely important ones to me that push me to grow closer to Jesus, that push me to be more like him and a better version of myself, that push me to live my life to the fullest right where I am, and that push me to be the light and allow me to pour into other people out of an abundance and an overflow in me. Um, and so I really want to encourage you guys as this new year begins or, you know, in any point in your life and in your year, build habits that are built up on Jesus and allow them to push you to have strong foundations in him. You know, remember, healthy habits are going to look different in different seasons, and that's okay. Remember that habits that are going to work for you aren't always going to work for others. Don't compare, but also don't, you know, hold around your habits like, oh, this is my habit. This is what I'm doing. You know, don't do it in a prideful way. Share with others, you know, out of a loving way. Um, everyone needs different healthy habits. Um, don't be jealous of other people's habits either. You know, don't compare, but also don't be jealous. Um, sometimes, when we look at people's life, we're looking at the high moment in their life while we're in our low. But we have to realize that they're going to be in a low one day and we will be in our high. So don't compare. There's this quote, the sun and the moon shine at different times, but they don't compare or get jealous of each other. You know, they just both have their different moments to shine. So don't compare or be jealous um, of your habits to other people. Um, and I hope that my habits, I hope that you don't compare to mine. I hope that you're not jealous of mine. I hope they just serve as an encouragement to you to build healthy habits to yourself. I pray God that, or I pray my prayer to God is that they serve as healthy habits or they serve as encouragement for you to build healthy habits that lead you closer to God. Um, not to, you know, sin, not to anything like that, not to your ways, but to Jesus. Um, and then, you know, just overall healthy habits allow our walk with God to be better. Um, and when we let them stem from our relationship with Jesus and we remember that we are nothing without him and that they're not going to say it was the only he can, but we want to do these things to be closer to him, then we're going to experience so much beauty in our lives. Um, and so I hope that that was able to find some encouragement for you guys. I know I talked a lot. This is definitely one of the longer podcasts um, that I've done myself. 
Um, but I think I'm just really happy to be back in front of the screen. This is actually the first time I've sat and done a podcast by myself in a while because I've been pre-filming before going to college. And this is also probably going to be the last time that I am sitting in, I film in the guest room in my um, family's house. And so this is probably going to be the last time I'm going to be filming in here before I go to college. So I'm definitely trying to enjoy it while I can and talking y'all's ears off in the process. Um, but I hope that that found encouragement for you guys. Um, my prayer is that these things just encourage you and lead you closer to Jesus. My encouragement and my prayer is that, and my hope is that, you know, you create healthy habits for yourself that are going to allow you to be a better version of yourself, lead you closer to Jesus, you know, all that good jazz. Um, and so now I want to share the challenge with you guys. So it's actually going to be a two-parter. And some of the um, podcasts coming up that are going to be being released, because I've pre-filmed them, like I said, um, some of the people that I interviewed who gave um, challenges, gave them with two-parters. So then I was like, I'm going to create a two-parter challenge. So the first one is <clears throat> kind of like three different options with it. But either one, create your own healthy habit. Two, be intentional about a healthy habit you already have. Or three, do both. Um, I don't want this to just go in one ear and out the other. I want you guys to actually apply this to your life because I believe that you will see growth in it. Remember, though, that a lot of times with habits, we won't see it right away. It's just like when you go to the gym. If you go to the gym one day, you're probably not going to look ripped the next day. But once you go consistently, you're going to look strong and healthy. You're going to be strong and healthy. And so stay consistent in the habits that you create and don't give up even when it gets tough and life gets hard and be willing to change your habits in different seasons. And then second is open up the door for someone else to be able to create a healthy habit. Um, and what I mean by this is just be there and pave the way for someone to be able to create a healthy habit of their own if, you know, they may not do it on their own. Uh, one example I have is buy a Bible or a journal for a friend who wants to study more and spend more time reading scripture or, you know, thinking, processing, get them, you know, literally a journal like this. Look, this journal, super cute. Got it, you know, on clearance at Marshall's. Love Marshall's. Got some bees on it. I write all my podcast stuff in it. I also have this journal right here um, with a Bible verse on it that I do all of my different Bible studies in and stuff like that. You know, I got my Bible. And fun fact, my Bible is actually a gift um, from one of my high school teachers that led the FCA um, at our high school. And I love it so much. I've had it since high school. Um, so gift a Bible to somebody. Gift a journal to somebody. Gift a devotional book. I've had many of those gifted to me that have led me closer to Jesus. Um, another idea is invite a friend or family member on a walk who wants to value exercise. Um, sometimes people, they just need that little push. They need that little encouragement. Or if you're already going to the gym, or if you're going to go on the walk, if you're going to sign up for the um, workout class, send them a text, give them a call, ask them the next time you hang out with them, hey, would you guys want to do this? Would you be willing to join me with this or on this? Um, and sometimes that also takes the scariness of taking that next step. Um, another idea is buy or put together a little spa gift or basket for a friend or family member who is stressed and needs to take the time to take care of themselves. That is one of the biggest things that a lot of people struggle with is that they feel guilty taking care of themselves. Pave the way for somebody to realize that it's okay, it is a gift, and share that with them. Or if you can't afford to do you know, some of these things, buy these things, Literally look at a friend and be like, look, friend, like, it's okay to rest. It's okay to take a day for yourself. Please do it. Um, and then hold them accountable. Be like, if you don't, you know, I'm going to keep asking you and reminding you. Um, another idea is get a book for someone who loves to read. Um, you know, books can be, you know, kind of expensive sometimes. You know, open up the door for them to not even have to worry about that. Um, get a gym gift card for somebody. I saw that some gyms, like, you literally can have a gift card for classes or things like that. Um, you know, I know at my gym, like, I can bring, like, a guest cheaper, I think. Um, I've actually been with one of my friends. My sister has, like, a little gym membership, the little card, and she's been using my sisters to come with me because she likes the gym that I go to. Um, you know, that's a way that we can go to the gym together. Get someone a gym gift card. Invite them to come with you. You know, if you can bring a free guest, bring the free guest. Um, get someone a massage gift card. I know that my mom has gotten a couple of those throughout the years, and she loves them, um, and they've been so good for her, especially since she has a lot on her plate. Um, and then another idea is offer free childcare so someone can Sabbath, so someone can rest. You know, maybe a young mom, um, a single mom, single dad, um, young dad, whatever it is, a young family, um, 
um, you know, offer to watch their kids. Um, so either the single parent can go and get some time on their own or, you know, the mom and dad can get some time together, you know, create that way, open up that door. Um, and by doing that, you're spreading love, you're spreading kindness and you're being the light, which is exactly what the whole message of this podcast is. So definitely talked a lot longer than I planned on, but that is okay. Um, I hope you guys have an amazing start to your year. I hope that you guys stay consistent throughout the year. I hope that you don't just go into the year saying, I'm going to do all of these things and not do them. You know, be realistic, be honest with yourself, give your desires to Jesus. Let him know what are the things that you want to grow in. Ask for his desires to come into your heart. Um, and go into this new year being intentional and ready to honor him and glorify him in all that you do from, you know, what you're doing in your free time to how you're taking care of your body to how you're enjoying the gifts that he has given you. If there's habits that you want to take that are mine, go for it. If you don't like any of mine and you want to take them and make them your own, do that. If there's some that you already have or there's some that you've been trying to do or that you just need that little push and encouragement to do, go and do it. Go have fun. Go run after it. Go create healthy habits that lead you closer to the heart of Jesus Christ who loves you very much. I love you guys and I hope you have an amazing day.